Hello again, uh, Mark here with uh, Paul Sartorelli, and uh, we're going to talk about the Tenth Commandment today. The longest one, do not covet your neighbor's house, do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male slave or female slave, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I thought that was interesting. Why don't we just say, uh, do not, and then everything that belongs to your neighbor. Yes. That's kind of bizarre to me. (laughs) And right off the bat, uh, I noticed that this one does not address an overt action. In other words, um, do not kill, do not steal, do not this. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. This one is between you and God. This one is a... Yeah, how do I know that you're coveting my Bible? Right. Or my, my Mont Blanc pen? Or, or your new car. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know if you are. Yeah, and so does he. Yes, right. <laughs> um, I, in a way, thought this was the, this one should be put before the 10th because, or no, actually before the 7th, before the 7th. The stealing one. Yes, because... You're coveting that person's car, or you like his wife, or whatever it is, uh, and the next step is to steal it. That's correct. Yeah. So let's. There's a form to fill out to, to tell God He has them in the wrong order. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Can you? <laughs> let's, and I'll go to him uh, when I'm there and tell him that, and so we'll start getting warm up. Where do you covet the most, or where do you covet the most? Uh, I cars. I'm sorry. Yeah, I drive on the freeway. Although, for the first time in my life, I, I have a car that I think is better than any other car. Good. I just that's a nice Audi, but it's not mine. He drives a Volkswagen Golf All Track, which is station yeah, wagon. Station wagon Golf with all wheel drive. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> Beautiful, and he has a new Arteon, and it's uh, very. It's pretty. a Volkswagen. We are. Vo- this is actually this show is sponsored by Volkswagen. <laughs> The Farfik Nugent is our vision statement. <laughs> Farfik Nugent, a word completely made up. Is it really? Yes, it was. Huh. So, okay, car dealerships, yes, I lust or covet, which is interesting. The word is very similar. Um, I'm not a geek, computer geek, but when I go into an Apple store, boy, those 13 mini phones look really nice. And the new iPads, wow. You can actually write in cursive on your iPad. Mm. I can covet really quickly in, a, in an I, I, uh, Apple store. <laughs> I like watches and shoes. Yes. Yeah, shoes, yep. <laughs> I'm one of the only men in the world that likes, likes his shoes to look a certain Oh, way. me too. Shoe, well, you and I are similar. Watches, shoes, cars. Those are things that yeah. I really like. Yeah. And fountain pens. And we have the same. Mm-hmm. Um, could covet mean evil desires equals evil? Uh, yes. I mean, James, not James. The, your English version of James translates it that. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Covet, New Old Testament, is sometimes described, is sometimes translated lust in the New Testament. Okay. Lust has a pretty negative connotation to it. It literally means desire. But it, when that desire crosses the line of integrity, that desire becomes sinful. It becomes lustful. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why temptation, by the way, is so dangerous. Again, I'm thinking of James, but um, temptation is dangerous because you you could never tempt me with a economics book, but you could tempt me with a really nice watch. You couldn't even test tempt me with a Casio watch, by the way. Mm-hmm. But you could tempt me with a really nice watch. Temptation is always going to connect with something that I desire. Mm. And when that desire crosses the line of integrity, now I'm in the area of lust and potential for sin if I give in to that lust. The desire can be neutral. It can be, but it also can turn into a sin, and it's about one's heart. Indeed. So let's desire again. God created us with desires, with hungers. I mean, if, if you didn't have a desire to eat, you'd starve to death. So we all have desires. We all have hungers. As men, our natural desire is for women. 
That's just the way we've been created. When that desire crosses the line of integrity, now it becomes lust, and that lust can give in to temptation. Right. And when we give in to temptation, then it's, then it's full-blown sin. No, that's right. That's James chapter 1. Okay. I can, can I say one other thing? Sure. So it, because it has that connotation, in the Old Testament, when you go to coveting, it is the it is not the taking yet, but it's the desire to own it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. So that's my neighbor's wife. Mm-hmm. I'm not satisfied with my own wife. I desire to own my neighbor's wife. So the natural desire, man for woman, is natural. When I dis- when I crosses the line of integrity, it's my neighbor's wife, and I desire to have her. The very first sin was Eve wanting that fruit. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Isn't that amazing? The first sin, you get... The first commandment broken, shall I say? Yes. Was was that? That's really. Let's think about that. Okay, you shall not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so let's think about desire again, and think about your own life. Think of the things you desire. the The natural desire to eat. Neutral. Okay. When that desire crosses the line of integrity, eating something God has forbidden. Mm-hmm. Now we're in the area of lust and temptation, mm. and when it's given into sin, is, sin enters. You're right. Do um, not covet was the first commandment she broke. He goes through all these different. Why would he mention donkeys and ox? And it sounds dated at that point. You know. Well, it is. <laughs> well, I know it's, it's two thousand two, years ago, but no four thousand. Yeah. Why does he do that? Why does he mention all those? Why didn't he just go from? You know, oh, good question. I. <laughs> Maybe to make sure he could have just done the Bailey wicket at the end. Don't don't covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. But maybe I mean, you do, we do that when we tell stories. You get very specific so as to catch people's ideas. So we could have started the show just by saying, don't covet. We're done. But I talked about Apple Store. We talked about cars. Okay. We talked about pens. And so when we when you get specific, now the you, mind starts. Yes, to work now the it. mind starts yes. to work. OK, I, you know, when you were reading it uh, again i was translated in the 21st century don't covet male or female servants i have peers friends that are pastors that have churches similar to mine and they may have a staff member or two that i covet (laughs) because boy that assistant pastor he's really good i'd love to have him on my team that's immediately what i thought of Mm -hmm. so the fact that moses got really specific here male and female servant my mind kicked into what i do and i do it and of course oxen and donkey and whatever else he mentions that's cars (laughs) yeah that's exactly those are actual items things that they own it goes through my head over and over and then when i was reading about this when you are coveting something, you're saying to God, I'm not satisfied with what I have. Yep, yep. I want that. So you're slapping God in the face for all that he gives you, for all the wonderful gifts. And part of it comes from the fact that I, I'm very guilty of this. I don't realize how good I have it. Mm-hmm. I prayed on my way here today and just gave thanks to all the things. And one led to another and another and another. I could have gone praying like that for hours, I literally. What a good practice that oh, was. Oh, it was wonderful. But my point is, is that I, I didn't, I didn't think about what I'd like to have. I was thankful for what I have. Mm-hmm. And so this is, in my opinion, maybe the most important of the commandments. Yes. I think you're so right. And the, even the way you just described it made me think it might be the most selfish of the commandments. Interesting. Because it's all about me. To, to quote, what, quote what you just said, you said, I'm not satisfied, Lord, with what you gave me. And so, first of all, it's selfish because it doesn't take into consideration how generous and kind God has been to me. So I, I X God out of the equation. Mm-hmm. But if I'm coveting my neighbor's wife or his his Audi, I'm I'm Xing my neighbor out of the equation and his wife, if that's her. And it's all about me. So coveting in many ways is the most self-centered, egoistic of the commands, perhaps. Because it's all about me, what I don't have, what I'm dissatisfied with, and what I really, really need. I can't live life that way. James uh, 1.14 says, each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. Mm -hmm. 
That's what we were just describing. <laughs> yeah. We are tempted. It's, it, the picture is that of, of a fishing pole. And so the, 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 you throw your, your fish net, no, your fish pole into the yeah. water, and there's a worm which actually I went fishing with a friend on Lake Erie last year. It's it's not a worm. It's a lure. And it's all the different colors. Perch like one color mm -hmm. and different fish like different colors. So here it comes. And I'll use the worm because that's what I know best. The fish is attracted to the worm. Okay. Men are attracted to women. That's natural. What we don't see, and this is when the coveting or the de desire goes beyond the integrity line, what we don't see behind it is the hook mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the danger and the ramifications of that. If people would just think of the consequences of giving in to that inordinate desire, the consequences are going to destroy you. But we never think that far ahead. Very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, the hook is there. Yeah. You don't see it, but it's there. To bring it down to its basics, you know, this little flashy thing is uh, uh, tempting the fish. It's a lot like that brand new car in the park in the in, in the dealer's lot. Mm -hmm. And I just need it. And I got to have it. Right. It's, yeah. uh, again, to go back to the idea that make you happy though. That's the point. It will make me happy. Yeah. It won't though. No. It won't. <laughs> but we believe the lie that we are the the sum total of my stuff. I am my car in the garage. I am my home of 2,800 square feet. I am. And so as I add up my stuff, that's me. And the more I want to improve me, I just have to add to my stuff. And I'm going to covet again and again and again. It's very, very much discontent. And it's very much materialistic. I got to tell you before going any further, I'm always amazed when people go, you know, you're having a conversation with them and they'll say, oh, yeah, well, First Timothy says, blah, 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 blah. I can't remember. So I'm, I'm, I have to read these things. Uh, <laughs> First Timothy 6.10 says, love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through the craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Mm -hmm. God loves us so much. He put down these 10 rules because he's trying to protect us from ourselves. Yeah, he is. Those pangs do come because we are, I, I can't tell you how much I've, I've, I've fallen for that lust of things, that coveting of things. And it, it, it is, does no good whatsoever. Right. And then maybe if I do a, a, a get it or something like, I want that car, I want that car, and then I get the car. You're going to want another one. Yeah. He starts it by saying the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. Money is just commerce. The love of money. And so in many ways, coveting if you put this under coveting is also a sin of idolatry yeah. because I am loving my money. No, I've been designed to love not things, but to love God and to love people. But now I love money mm -hmm. and I love my neighbor's wife or my neighbor's ox or my neighbor's stuff. And so all of a sudden I become an idolater subsuming my love, not for God, but for this stuff. Yeah. Coveting it can really become a sin of idolatry. Interesting. I'm going to get cut to uh, what I think is one of the most astounding things about this, this commandment. <laughs> Um, Paul found this one the most convincing of how sinful he was. Mm. He couldn't get past oh. it. For my, maybe my favorite chapter in all of mm. the books, it's the Romans 7. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced me in all kinds of covetedness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. What's he saying? He recognized the law and he recognized how sinful he was because of the law. And he worked every moment of his, the rest of his life to overcome that through God's grace. Through Christ, yes. Yeah. He began that by saying, if the law did not say, do not covet, 
then I wouldn't know that I'm coveting. Right. So it's not like the law made him covet. The law simply defined for him what this discontentment and this dissatisfaction right. Right. This in emptiness. his being was. That's right. It's called coveting. Right. And the coveting will kill you. And the law defined it. The law showed that he broke it. And the law, in a sense, it's where he's going in Romans, pointed him to Christ as the ultimate fulfillment of breaking that law. When it gets down to it, the goal of every single human in one way or another is to be to find happiness. Every single person that is living once somehow desires to have mm. happiness. And these laws and then the forgiveness for breaking these laws do make us happy. God's giving us the answer to our failure. Yes. And and to define happiness as something much deeper than just laughter. It's exactly. it's, yeah. it's joy, mm-hmm. it's contentment. I think of the 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 Westminster Confession that says what is what is the chief end of man but to in, to to know God and to enjoy him forever. Yes, yeah. That's it begins not with happiness, it begins with knowing God and to know God and to enjoy him forever. In many ways th- through this commandment the Lord is calling us don't covet, he's calling us to a life of contentment, mm-hmm. be content with what I gave you. And then I would even say a life of generosity. Mm-hmm. So don't hoard the stuff I've gave you, given you Give it out. Yeah. Give it out. Be be generous. Live simply and live in the joy and contentment of knowing the Lord and of sharing the stuff that he's given to you. A, a little personal thing. I had uh, lately been praying to God about how to show the love he gave me, which is interesting, back to him. Here, mm-hmm. here's the love you gave me. I'd like to give it back to you. And also to g- show ways that I love my wife more. And as and as I do this, I find myself loving Amy more. That's great. Isn't that weird? Yes. I want to show her how much I love her, but I also want to love her more. Well, doing that makes me love her more. Mm, yes, because love is also an action. God so loved the world that he gave. So it's not enough just to want to feel that love. It's an action. Do it. Do those actions of love. Can I say <laughs> this commandment was given to the people of Israel that were wandering in the wilderness. They didn't have a whole lot of stuff yet, but God was sort of foreseeing the day that they would have some stuff. Mm -hmm. John Stott, who was the pastor of All Souls Church in London for many, many years, passed away a few years ago. Loved reading his stuff. He's so he's profound and simple. Get anything by Stott and uh, The Cross of Christ. Get that book by John Stott and read it. um, And you'll be so confident of Christ's love for you. Listen to what he says about this command. Um, Like the Israelites in the wilderness... We, meaning followers of Jesus, we are pilgrims traveling to the promised land, and we will be wise to travel light. Isn't that good? Don't covet. Travel light. Thank God with what you've got. Mm -hmm. Give away so much of what you have. Travel light and look toward the promised land to where God has taken you. As you said a couple of weeks ago, you've never seen a U-Haul follow a a hearse. Yes, right. (laughs) Travel light. You're going somewhere where that's not going to be needed. Right, right. Well, uh, I won't say we've wrapped up with 10, uh, the final. I think we have. Because the 10th commandment, in my opinion, is the one that matters. It it kind of encapsulates the rest of them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It really does. I like that. As usual, God's smart. Yeah. Blows me away. He had him in the right order. He did. You know, right? I'm not going to go to him. Cancel and that. <laughs> By the way, I just thought you might want to rearrange him a little. <laughs> it doesn't work too well. Thank you very much for watching slash listening to another episode of A Fresh Take. Thank you.